of the 2013-2014 Common Council to order. Uh, first of all, I'd just uh, like to ask the clerk to read the uh, comments, the uh, quote. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking, don't settle. Thank you for that. Next, I'd just like to make an announcement that um, our meeting tonight is going to be delayed on charter cable. There was some utility work uh, down in their office area, and the cables were cut. It will be live on the Internet on the city website and also on WSCS website and on, on AT&T AT UVerse. Next, please, uh, would the clerk would call the roll. Thirteen present. Next, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd just like to call for a moment of silence remembering the Oklahoma uh, City uh, uh, tornado victims and the tornado that just went through Oklahoma today and the emergency personnel that are trying to sort out that uh, unfortunate situation. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Are there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, pl clerk, please call the roll. Next, we'll go on to item 1.4, council appointments. That will lie over. And following that would be uh, 1.5, confirmation of council appointments. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If it uh, pleases the council, I would like to um, make the motion for all, unless there's any um, disagreement. Please go ahead. I would move to confirm all three um, committee assignments, committee appointments. Second. It's moved and seconded to approve those appointments. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, press your one button or, or number two to say no. Would the clerk call the roll. Thirteen. Next, we're going to have a proclamation for National Public Works Week. The Office of the Mayor, City of Sheboygan Proclamation. Whereas public work services provided in our community are an integral part of citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support and understanding and informed citizenry is, in vital, is vital to the efficient operation of the public work systems, programs, such as water sewers, streets, highways, public buildings, and solid waste collections, and whereas the health and safety and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and service, says, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these services, as well as their Planning, design, construction are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is material influenced, influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work that they perform. 
I therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim the week of May 19th through the 25th of 2013 as National Public Works Weeks. We have a few individuals from our Public Works team that are going to come forward. And they're filling in for their, their boss who had a family emergency today. Thank you, Mayor. Ryan Sazma, Sharon Teason uh, is the industrial waste. Ryan Sazma, city engineer. Sharon Teason is the industrial waste chemist at the wastewater plant. Mark Pazarat is the building uh, superintendent, I guess. And Joel Colsey is the uh, street's super superintendent. Uh, the uh, since 1960, the American Public Works Association has sponsored National Public Works Week across America. North America, more than 28,000 APWA members use National Public Works Week to energize and educate the public on the importance public works is in their daily lives. The theme of this year's celebration for Public Works Week is because of public works. Imagine turning on your faucet and no water because there's no water treatment plant or no operator. Imagine the pile of garbage in your backyard because there's no garbage collection. Imagine unpaved streets with big ruts because there's no one available to maintain the streets. Imagine no parks for your children to play in because there's no one available to maintain the parks. Imagine no storm sewers to handle the rain, no sanitary sewers to handle the liquid waste because there's no one there to build and maintain the sewer pipes. Imagine no wastewater treatment plant to clean your wastewater before it enters the drinking water supply because there is no wastewater treatment plant and no one to operate and maintain the facility. Public works professionals are the heart of each community as they design, build, reconstruct, manage, operate, and maintain public works infrastructure, such as streets, parks, storm sewers, and sanitary sewers, drinking water plants, and wastewater treatment plants. Citizens are able to have clean water, safe streets, and neighborhoods, efficient traffic, safe and clean communities, all because of public works. Thank you. We have one additional presentation or representation, I guess we should say, and that's for our wastewater treatment facility. Um, the City of Sheboygan's Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility and Donahue and Associates, Inc. recently received a top honor in the American Council of Engineering Companies, the ACEC of Wisconsin's 2013 Engineering Excellence Competition. The 2013 Grand Award was presented at the American Club in Kohler on March 22nd, recognizing the collaborative effort between the City of Sheboygan and Donahue to improve the energy efficiency, <coughs> production, and recovery at the wastewater treatment facility. With this project, Sheboygan's wastewater treatment facility became the first in Wisconsin to regularly produce more electrical energy than it requires exporting excess renewable electricity to the grid and becoming a net zero energy facility. On an annual basis, the facility can produce more than 85% of its required electrical energy and 90% of its required heat energy. Over the past decade, facility superintendent Dale Dorr and his crew focused on making the energy efficiency improvements with the ambitious <coughs> goal of eventually becoming an energy self-sufficient facility. The award-winning project was designed by Donahue and included anaerobic digestion improvements to increase the digestion capacity of the biogas production and 400 kilowatts of additional microturbine capacity to convert the large quantity of biogas released. This monumental achievement and one is one that demonstrates a commitment to sustainability and the use of innovative technologies. The city of Sheboygan owns and operates the 18 million gallon per day Sheboygan and Re Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility, serving seven area communities and 68,000 people across 60 square miles. Because the city is of Sheboygan's resolve to achieve an energy sufficient status, the Sheboygan facility is now an important energy case study for municipal wastewater treatment facilities throughout the United States and around the globe. Dale, would you please come forward? And this is the Excellence Best State Award presented to the City of Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Plant. And then we have the 2013 Engineering Excellence Grand Award 
uh, for Donahue and Associates and the wastewater pre treatment plant in Sheboygan and as they achieve net zero energy usage. Gils, congratulations and appreciate all the hard work. That you've done. Thank you everyone. If you haven't had a chance to go down to the wastewater treatment plant, uh, we have a truly unique facility. Uh, there are days uh, that we can produce more than 100% of our energy on site and the meter turns backwards. That, the first time that occurred was May 5th, 2011. It's not a lot, but for the whole day we had a net 124 kilowatts. But we save, we save hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on energy. There's a lot of things that we've done there. We've got a great staff. Uh, I in invite everyone uh, to come down there and take a look. Uh, and, and this was just uh, icing on the cake, so thank you. Thank you, Bill. <coughs> Next, we'll go on to a presentation, the Senior Sydney uh, Activity Center report, their annual report. Wendy? My name is Wendy Schmitz. I am the supervisor of the Senior Activity Center. It's Jim Barron and uh, Jody and um, John have been to the center. I'm hoping after the slideshow today that the rest of the councilmen will come and visit us. Joe and Kevin are very familiar with this information as they are active members of our commission and I would like to thank them for their continued support. I wait to give my annual update in May, as this is the month when we celebrate older Americans. This year's theme is Unleash the Power of Age. All across the country, communities are recognizing that aging Americans are productive, active, and influential members of society. This year, I have prepared a short slide presentation to highlight the accomplishments we have made as seniors in this community. In 2012, we finally had our bike rack installed. We offer Saturday bike rides in the spring and summer. We made significant building improvements last year. These are pictures of what the dining room looked like when the renovation first started a couple of years ago. Our dance classes squeezed into the end of the room. The lighting was poor. The staff, seniors, and their family members started painting. Energy efficient lighting was installed throughout the building. Today, our Zumba classes have a well-lit, comfortable space. The classes, as you can see, are very popular. The updated space has led to increased participation. In 2012, we averaged 2,110 visits per month, an increase of 134 per month from 2011. The renovations were completed using funds raised by the Friends Group. No city funds were used. Over 600 of the seniors who use the center are members of the Friends. This is what the entranceways used to look like a few years ago, and I apologize for the fuzziness of that particular picture. 
these are the changes that were made last year. <clears throat> Local high school volunteers working in one of our kitchens in 2012. This is a picture of one of a team of volunteers who donated their time every Friday last spring to work at a factory. The wages they received, they donated towards the kitchen renovation. And this is the kitchen cafe today. We worked with the Department of Health to train our volunteers, as we do a lot of um, activities with food. The new space is used for lunches and workshops, cooking classes, and special events. Last year, work continued on improving the landscaping. Local high school volunteers help a couple of times every week. We utilize the expertise of others. The Cola Company IT department, LTC students, and one of our high school volunteers taught iPad classes. They're actually <coughs> available this summer also. However, one of our most important functions is to provide a daily source of socialization, a safe, comfortable place to meet friends. These gentlemen are there every day. We offered a variety of health and fitness opportunities. In 2012, the classes were filled to capacity. Water exercise was offered at the central building twice daily. The mission of the Senior Activity Center is to encourage older adults to remain active and engaged in their community. We offered learning opportunities in the arts and crafts department, but over 30 of our programs are led by seniors sharing their talents. Printing, mahjong classes, a digital camera class, tai chi, a reader's theater are just a few of the examples. In 2012, 4,863 hours were donated by our volunteers. Here, computer tutors are facilitating a webinar. 4,863 hours is equivalent to $88,500 of work time, an increase of over $20,000 from the year before. Our volunteers work in the community. This group helped prepare <coughs> materials for the transit department, obviously the top slide. The lady wearing the scarf is an active volunteer. She just turned 93. Many volunteers helped to train Navi, the Sheboygan search and rescue dog. Volunteer tax preparers assisted 800 people this tax season. We continue to host a local cable TV show and work with resident artists from John Michael Kohler Art Center. The people on the bottom slide are members of Ex Fabula, the storytellers. One of our seniors helped start a local group after this. In 2012, the gentleman brought home 15 medals from the Senior Olympics, and two lady swimmers brought home 10. Two of the boys, as they like to call themselves, head to nationals next month. In September and October, 23 of us traveled to Cuba on a cultural exchange. 
Last year, Evelyn Prevenus challenged Mayor Van Akron to join our annual sky day di bleh, <laughs> skydiving event. She just turned 86. We'll be jumping for the seventh time and of course is challenging Mayor Van Der Steen. The Senior Activity Center is proud to celebrate the achievements and continued commitment of our Sheboygan seniors. My job is to help them unleash the power of age. Thank you. And uh, the council has uh, the annual report in front of you. Wendy, thank you very much for that report and your accomplishments during the last year. And uh, thanks for that challenge. <laughs> Next is the public forum. Do we have anyone registered for that? No, we do not. No? Okay, then we'll go on to the mayor's comments. First of all, I just want to remind you about the Memorial Day observance on Monday the 27th. That's next Monday. We'll start out with a 9 a.m. parade, a 10 a.m. service at Fountain Park, and an 11.30 service at the Hmong Memorial in DeLand Park. Um, we are seeking aldermanic candidates for the positions open in the 1st District and the 6th District, and currently we have five candidates uh, that are applying for the 1st District position and four for the 6th District position. And we just wanted to let everyone know that those are all due in by this coming Friday. That's the deadline for people to apply. And then we also have one of our uh, neighborhood associations, the North Flats neighborhood. Uh, on June 1st from 5 to 7.30, they're gonna have a potluck at the game board on North A Street. It's called uh, Bring a Chair and Dish to Share. Okay, then we'll go on uh, to the um, to item number two, a hearing. In in connection with the changes in the text of the city zoning ordinance to change various sections as to provide for the regulation of donation drop-off boxes. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard? Is there anyone that wishes to be heard? Please come forward. Please just give us your name and address and you can make your comments then. Hi, my name is Renee Bowerman. I'm here um, representing Goodwill. We have a store on the south side of town, but I, my office is in Milwaukee. Um, and I wasn't sure if I would have an opportunity to speak tonight. I'll, I will make it brief. I know that um, uh, there will be a public hearing scheduled, or I believe that's um, the next step. Um, I want to thank you um, for considering regulation, regulating the donation drop boxes we as an organization do not use the boxes and there's a lot of confusion about who does operate the boxes and um, it, it helps us um, to know that there's some kind of regulation. As we built our new store and we went through the city process and we had a lot of um, uh, things that we don't mind going through to um, uh, build our image and have an attractive store and take care of our donations. Um, we like to be put on a level playing field with others that are also um, collecting in the community. So I wanna thank you all for your support. I wanna thank you for considering um, the regulations and um, look forward to you know, talking through more details of them if anyone um, would be interested in doing that. And I don't know if tonight's the right time or if the next, the next hearing is. Um, city attorney. Um, she's got any further comments. We're just accepting comments tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, is there anyone else that would wish to be heard? If not, I'd uh, accept a motion to close the hearing. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. There's a movement second to close the hearing. <clears throat> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye or press your one button. Clerk, call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That would be item three one through three two five. Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you again. I move to accept and file all, all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of committee, pass all resolutions, ordinances, and substitute resolutions. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Or is there any discussion? Seeing none. Thirteen eyes. Next, we'll go on to reports of officers. Item 4.1, an RO by the Assistant City Attorney submitting a memo in support of findings of the Law and Licensing Committee regarding Roxana Ramirez, the holder of City of Sheboygan's taxi cab license number 9748. Okay, that would uh, be held. Uh, next is item 4-2, an RO by Assistant City Attorney submitting a memo in support of findings of the Law and Licensing Committee regarding the VIP taxi, holder of City Taxi Cab Business License number 2847. That would be accept and file. Hmm? We'll hold that till 6-2. Okay, that's also a hold until 6-2. Next is items 4.3 through 4.8. Those will be referred. And under resolutions, uh, we'd refer 5.1 to the Salary and Grievances Committee. And under reports of committees, item 6.1 and RC by law and licensing submitting facts and findings in the matter of a quasi-judicial hearing for the taxi cab driver's license 9748 Roxana Ramirez Alderman Vanderweel thank you move the RC be accepted and adopted second thank you. could you also do an accept and file on 4.1 as it goes with it okay and also that I uh, to accept and file for the RO um, 4.1 it's been moved and seconded on okay. both of those documents. Any discussion on that motion? Uh, Go ahead. I got a question for the city clerk. I um, thought you were recommending to hold 4 1 and 4 2 until 6 2. 6 1 and 6 2. Each of them goes with. Oh, with, with the one, 6 one, 1 and 6 not, not okay. for June 2nd. I thought it was June 2nd. Right. No, no, no. Okay. Sorry. Hold until the done. <laughs> not for June. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on that motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen ayes. Next, we'll go on to 6 2 and RC by law and licensing, submitting facts and findings in the matter of the quasi judicial hearing for taxi cab business license number 2847 for VIP taxi. Alderman Jody Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adapted Second. and the RO be placed on file. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Then we'll go on to 6-3 in RC by finance, recommending authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2013 bu budget, established appropriations for purchase and demolition of 10 14 and 10 16 Erie Avenue and appropriations for the 2013 mini uh, storm sewer projects Alderman Hammond thank you mr. mayor I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage second thank you for that motion and second is there any discussion on that motion see none would the clerk please call the roll Thirteen eyes. Next is item 6.4, an RC by salary and grievances recommending amending subsection 3 of subs of subs of subs of general ordinance number 40-11-12 relating to the Wisconsin retirement system contribution rates for the office of mayor. All the person, Mary Lynn Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move that the... Um uh, uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted and that the substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. 
Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? There. Yes, Alderman Donahue? I guess my button's not working. There we go. Um, just a, a little bit of information here. Um, there were two pieces to this ordinance. One was to um, uh, amend the ordinance to have the mayor's uh, contribution to the Wisconsin retirement system be in line with state law. The second part of the resolution was to, uh, in essence, decrease the percentage that the mayor is paying for his health insurance. Um, currently, non-rep employees pay 15% of uh, the uh, premium, as I understand it. Um, in the previous uh, council, the uh, amount was fixed at 18%. Um, so the um, so I'm going to vote against the substitute amendment. I feel strongly that the mayor's contribution to his health insurance should be no more than um, the uh, non-represented employees. Um, our mayor's position uh, from a financial point of view has been a positive for the, for the city. Um, it's a, 20 per, uh, a reduction of $20,000, but uh, I think that this disparity doesn't make sense and we should uh, try to keep this uh, um, uh, consistent, if at all possible. Thank you for that discussion. Anyone else? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> in the committee, the, the uh, vote in the committee was a tie to, to, uh, to leave it at 18% and two to move it back to, uh, I believe it's 12%. The, the health insurance is 12% if the people are in the, uh, whatever you call it, the lifestyle program and 15 if they're not, <clears throat> it's 12%. Uh, one of the reasons I decided to vote against lowering this, uh, I believe it was Alderman Carlson when, when we had the uh, document last year uh, lowering the, the mayor's salary to uh, uh, $50,000. I think part of his document also was to raise the uh, <clears throat> mayor's health insurance up, up to 18%. And uh, as I mentioned at the committee, both of the mayoral candidates knew when they ran for the office what the new salary was going to be and what the expectation was going to be for their health insurance contribution. And also uh, something that I want to just mention briefly, we'll be discussing it at a uh, committee of the whole meeting in early June. One of the reasons I <clears throat> move, uh, I, I didn't support lowering the mayor's contribution, and it's my understanding that this particular 18% does not affect this mayor because he gets his health insurance somewhere else, but that's beside the point. But one piece of information I, I received, and as I said, I'll be discussing it more fully at the Committee of the Whole meeting, is that uh, there was a recent Milwaukee Journal Sentinel article that showed what the private sector health insurance premiums were in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, a fa the family, the single plan, I should say, uh, for the state of Wisconsin, average for the private sector is $8,844. The private sector single plan in Wisconsin is $5,014 for a difference of $3,430 additional per employee per year. For a family plan, the city of Sheboygan premium for 2012-2013 is $20,776.80. Private sector average in Wisconsin is $15,024. That's a 2011 statistic. For a difference of $5,752.80 additional per employee per year. Uh, with that striking of a difference between the private sector and the city of Sheboygan, uh, I think the trend for all of the employees as we go forward, and I know we're going to be discussing this further, as we go forward this year with salary and grievance, I can't support lowering that 18% because I think uh, probably not an all one swoop, but gradually, especially when we get into 2015 with a tremendous budget deficit that, deficit, deficit that we have, we may come to decisions of possibly having to increase the employee portion uh, of their contribution to health insurance or on the other hand, laying off people. We may have some very difficult decisions to make. So I can't support lowering that 18% uh, because I think very likely in the next few years, 
we may have to do that with some of our, with our non-rep employees, and then the next time we negotiate contracts, we may even have to have that goal in mind that, and, and I don't like to do it or even talk about it, but facts are facts. I don't think we can continue to be that out of line with what the private sector is paying for their employees in Wisconsin when, it amounts, when, when a family plan amounts to a difference of almost $5,800 a year per employee. Thank you. Thank you for that discussion. Any other discussion? Alderman Donahue? Um, it's an apples-oranges comparison, and while I appreciate those figures, of course, what's behind those figures, which is not at all relevant, in my opinion, to our current, uh, the, dis the matter before us right now, is that the insurance that private employees have is not very good insurance. They pay a tremendous amount for plans that just aren't very good. So uh, to strive to, to go to the bottom rather than to, to head up is, is not a personal goal of mine. In any event, that is neither here nor there with respect to what we're talking about here, which is just you know, basic equity. So we do have elected officials. Um, the mayor is one of them. There's no real reason for the mayor's percentage to be higher. Now it may come about, uh, as Alderman Bourne stated, that in the future we're going to be asking our employees to pay far more. Well then, at least the mayor's salary will be at an equitable level and we aren't going to be having to make those adjustments. This is just a, a question of fairness. And, and so I think uh, whether or not uh, Mayor Vandersteen is affected by it or not, we should make this consistent. Um, it, it, it just, it makes sense to me and, and I would urge you to vote against this particular substitute ordinance. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boring. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. With all due respect, Alderman Donahue, there's plenty, plenty of public, uh, I mean private sector insurance plans. Uh, we have some right in this, right in this area with Kohler Company, Volrath Company. Uh, yes, if you talk to some of the very, very small businesses where some of those people are paying $10,000 a year in premiums for a $10,000 deductible. But I would say that the major corporations in Sheboygan and around the state that fall into that $15,000 a year annual premium are certainly very, very good, uh, very, very good health plans. In fact, some of those are, are negotiated by private sector unions. So I, I don't know where you're getting your idea that uh, private sector health insurance is substandard. It may be compared to what we offer our employees, but you know we're we're here to uh, to uh, we were elected by the people that are paying the freight for these pop, for these premiums, and those are our constituents. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for those comments, Alderman Bourne. Um, at the Salary and Grievances Committee, there was one more item that I think we should bring up. The City Attorney would please comment on the uh, the wages for the mayor that have to be set prior to an election versus the benefits uh, the uh, the statutes talk about uh, not raising the uh, the salary of elected official uh, during during the term but uh, that has been interpreted not to apply to, to benefits so uh, you can change the benefits during the term. For instance, uh, uh, raise the, uh, the WRS contribution, uh, raise the, uh, the health insurance premiums. Uh, you've done that for the other elected officials as well over the years. Uh, so that can be done, raised or lowered as far as the uh, benefits go during the, uh, during the term. Thank you for that point of information. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Attorney McLean, there's one other point on this whole thing with respect to Wisconsin retirement system. If you could just comment, because I'm concerned is we need to deal with that issue as well um, as part of this, and I'm just wondering if it might make sense to split the question um, in this one and deal with the Wisconsin retirement system issue and then the health insurance issue. Um, I don't know. Okay, well, the, the document that's before you is the uh, substitute ordinance and that deals with the Wisconsin retirement, okay. just with the Wisconsin retirement. If uh, you vote in favor of that, uh, basically uh, you would be <coughs> voting in favor of that substitute as opposed to the ordinance 
that was introduced uh, that was referred to salary and grievance that contained both the change in the WRS contribution rate and the health insurance contribution rate. Uh, if you are in favor of changing both the, the WRS contribution level and the health insurance level, uh, then you would want to vote no on the substitute and pass the original ordinance that was introduced. Is that the, what you're looking for? Thank you. I wanted to clarify that because the, the, what, what we're voting on right now is just to change the Wisconsin retirement system to bring us in line with state law. Um, the conversation that we're having um, regarding the health insurance is actually part of a, you know, if, if this substitute of the substitute of the substitute three times removed gets shot down, then it's the next one, if I understand you, then we can bring that one. It's the original. So right, right. now what we're voting on is just the Wisconsin retirement system. Right, but Thank if you. you vote in favor of this, then the general ordinance that was originally introduced that dealt with the two topics would be filed. Yep. Okay, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Nine ayes, four noes. Motion passes. <coughs> Item uh, 7.1 will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Under uh, matters laid over, city attorney. Okay, general uh, ordinance 5-13-14 by Alderman Lewandowski and Thiel annexing territory to the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Scott Lewandowski. Thank you. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Second. Motion, we've received a motion and a second on, on that. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes, one nay. No, twelve eyes. One abstain. Oh, one abstain, I'm sorry. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. A 9.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That would be referred to law and licensing. And 9.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That would be referred to law and licensing. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Move movement second to adjourn. All those uh, in favor, please press your number one button and, or, or number two and the clerk call the roll. Thirteen eyes. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>